to June 2012. He is currently the Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment as well as Minister in the Ministry of Finance and the Economy. So ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Senator the Honorable Vasan Bharat, Minister of Trade, Industry and Investments and the Minister in the Ministry of Finance with a round of applause to give us the future address. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Dr. Raghavadu Ramela, Chair and Professor, School of Business of the University of the Southern Caribbean and Chairperson for today's business seminar. My Cabinet colleague, Senator the Honorable Larry Hawaii, Minister of Finance and the Economy. Dr. Ibenime Chidozi, Chair and Professor of the Department of Management and Hospitality and Marketing. School of Business, University of Southern Caribbean, Dr. Clinton Valley, President of USC, and let me uh, enjoin with my colleague, Minister Hawaii, in giving my sincerest thanks to the service uh, of uh, your brother, Mr. Ken Valley, who I knew also very well, and served this country with a great deal of, uh, uh, with, a, with a significant deal of entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial ability that he brought to his, um, to, the, to the ministry, as well as with a great deal of faith with which he served Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Suresh Suku, Chief Executive Officer, RBC Financial Group of the Caribbean. Mr. Kasala Kamara, Political Scientist and Economist, Management, uh, Faculty and Students of the University of Southern Caribbean, Distinguished Guests. Ladies and gentlemen, um, members of the media, a very good morning to all of you. It's, it's with a great deal of pleasure that I'm here this morning to deliver some remarks to you. Uh, this is the third annual business development seminar hosted by the University of the Caribbean. An event of such magnitude and, and, and as nature such as this signifies the dedication of the university and its students towards the achievement of sustainable development for the economy of Trinidad and Tobago. And let me say at the outset, if the deliberations of uh, today's discussions is anything close to the magnificent voice of Melanie, who sang earlier on, you would have had an extremely uh, fruitful day indeed. I think also the presence of both uh, Minister Hawaii and myself at an event uh, such as this signifies to, to the government of Trinidad and Tobago the importance with which we place the work of the University of the Southern Caribbean, and in particular uh, today's uh, seminar. What you're doing today and what you're discussing today signifies and underscores the importance of this discussion on the strategic intervention and the significance of domestic and foreign direct investment for growth and development in the economy and in particular with Trinidad and Tobago. We can no longer perceive ourselves as being disconnected with the rest of the world. Indeed, whatever happens anywhere else in the world, whether it's in uh, Europe, whether it's in Asia, whether it's in South or Latin America, whether it's in any part of the world uh, that you, countries whose names you may not, be able, may not be aware of today, or which we may not be able to even pronounce, their activities affect us in some way. It is simply that we are today totally and completely connected with the rest of the world, and what affects them, as they say, uh, when the United States or any of our trading partners sneezes, Trinidad and Tobago gets a cold. And that's an actual fact, because we are so interconnected with the rest of the world. Take, for example, what's happening in the Eurozone at the moment. Many of you will know that many of the countries in the Eurozone area, uh, United Kingdom, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, they're all in desperate financial difficulty. And in fact, uh, probably for the first time in many years, the one thing that holds them together, which is the Euro, the currency, is actually under significant threat. In the United States, 
uh, for the first time they have in, in the United States history, they have downgraded the long-term debt ratings from triple A. It's the first time that's ever happened. When one looks at the countries that, what, that uh, the rest of the world was looking towards for sustainable growth, the BRIC countries we call them, um, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, they have also now said that their growth rates that they had predicted is no, like, is, is no longer likely to be achieved. In our CARICOM region, our main, one of our, our second main, uh, major trading partner, because of high levels of debt that's been incurred, and because of uh, a loss of revenue to direct result of um, tourist arrivals, they are also suffering. So, when one looks at our traditional and non-traditional trading partners, we now have to look at how we can position ourselves globally to take advantage of whatever opportunities uh, exist. Or, we've got to find niche opportunities that we can develop for ourselves and go after. And I say that because when one looks at, I mean, Mr. Hawaii was talking about our energy sector, foreign direct investment in our energy sector. When one looks at our major trading partner, as far as energy is concerned, one looks to the US. When one looks at what's happening in the US economy, one can see directly why our revenues are under threat in Trinidad and Tobago. Similarly, when one looks at our second major trading partner, which is, a, which is the CARICOM region, and you see that their economies are suffering as a direct result of uh, a loss of uh, tourist dollars, they take a significant amount of goods and services from Trinidad and Tobago to sustain their economies. And of course, if their economies are suffering, our manufacturers and providers of goods and services in Trinidad will subsequently suffer as a result. The question then is what do we do internally to position ourselves to be able to grow externally? That is really the issue. Because I think we all are aware that we cannot continue to grow or to even survive just looking inwardly. We've got to look at bigger markets. The market in Trinidad and Tobago is 1.3 million people. If we are to obtain any economies of scale to survive long term, we've got to find new markets. The CARICOM market is not big enough, 6 million people. The CARIFORA market, 20 million people, which includes the Dominican Republic, is not big enough. We've got to start looking at other markets and possibly stop focusing on our north uh, trade and start focusing on our trade uh, in a southerly direction towards South and Latin America. Those markets alone present uh, uh, th those markets alone present a, a marketplace of over 600 million people for our goods and services. So the issue then is how do we position ourselves and what do we do to be able to encourage investment into Trinidad and Tobago, develop our existing sectors in Trinidad and Tobago, and be able to be competitive on those export markets. And the first thing, and Mr. Hawaii, the Minister Hawaii spoke about, was the ease of doing business in Trinidad and Tobago. One of the first things, when I took up office, uh, as I was asked by the Prime Minister, was why is it that there has been some degree of reticence about investment in Trinidad and Tobago? Why was there genuinely possibly a lack of confidence? And why was it that there was so much credit overhang in the banks? Why is it that the banks were so chock full of money, six billion at one point in time, okay? And uh, essentially, uh, people were not taking loans. Why is it that you're not, people were not necessarily going to the banks to, to develop the product, productive sector? Yes, we, we, were, we were purchasing motor cars and so on. But why is it that we were not investing in Trinidad and Tobago? And one of the big issues, having spoken to the private sector, is the ease of doing business, the frustrations of doing business in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, today, when we talk about the globalized village in which we find ourselves, that is no longer a cliche. It is no longer a term or, a term or part of a terminology that we use. It actually is a fact. I can sit in Maracas Bay with my computer and conduct business over the internet using Skype or just internet facilities or my mobile phone in China or in India. And similarly, someone sitting in any part of the world can be doing business in Trinidad and Tobago over the internet. 
So money knows no borders. Trade knows no borders. We could move money from one account to another by the click of a mouse. And so therefore, when one is looking to invest in a country or in any destination across the world, they are going to be looking at where is it easy to do business, particularly in today's very difficult financial climate. People will look for risk versus reward, and they will determine, in addition to risk versus reward, they will determine where is it easy to get my money in and money out, and where is it easy to do business. So we started together with the World Bank looking at some of the areas that have created impediments for us to do business in Trinidad and Tobago. Now many of you may have heard me publicly say that there are certain indicators that are drivers that causes us to be ranked at number 68th in the world as far as ease of doing business. Now if we are serious about, as a country, about developing the industrial sector, about developing further investments into Trinidad and Tobago, we've got to attack very aggressively those numbers to ensure that a business person who is sitting outside of Trinidad and Tobago and wishes to invest in any destination across the world, what is he going to do? Is he really going to jump on an aircraft and come and look at the environment in Trinidad and Tobago and make a determination as to whether he's going to do that? Is he going to go to every country in the world to determine where he's going to place his money? How is he going to create the filter that determines which are the four or five markets he will shortlist to visit? Yes, he might pick up the telephone and call Mr. Suku or call someone from the business sector. What's the first thing they're going to tell him? If they are being objective about how easy it is to do business in Trinidad and Tobago. So, the first thing an investor will do is he'll pick up one of the ratings from one of the agencies and he'll have a quick flick down and see, oh yes, uh, Singapore number one, South Korea number two, or oh, Trinidad and Tobago number 68. Why is he going to come to Trinidad and Tobago? There's no reason. So essentially what we do is we preclude at the outset a vast number of opportunities from people who may be looking to invest by simply the ranking that we are in that booklet. In fact, we may never see that investor even venturing to come to Trinidad to see that we do have significant opportunities. But that ranking precludes him from coming, him or her. And so therefore, from an international perspective, one of the first things we had to do was to ensure, or we have to do is to ensure, that we improve our rankings. And I've made it very clear that in the next 12 months we will move 20 places in the right direction, of course. So we're working very hard to ensure that by, uh, in 12 months' time, we would have, by the time the next rankings come out, and which will be published in August of next year, or September of next year, the World Bank will have, will have us below a rank of number 50. We're currently at 68. And I've gone further to say there's absolutely no reason why in three years' time we ought not to be in the top, in the top 10 destinations in the world for ease of doing business. Now, when one looks at some of those indicators, you will see that it takes 43 days to set up a business in Trinidad and Tobago. 43 days to incorporate and set up a business in Trinidad and Tobago. When one, can, when one compares that even some of our CARICOM neighbors, you'll see that in Jamaica, it's six days. And when one looks at the, why it takes 43 days to set up a business, you will see that a lot of it are bureaucratic uh, insertions in our system that have evolved over the years that really add very little value to the system. And so, very recently, we were able to take a note to Cabinet and we were able to call in the Board of Inland Revenue and the National Insurance Board and the Ministry of Legal Affairs. And from the 1st of January, that entire procedure will be down to less than three days. <laughs> Similarly, for those of you who have ever had to deal with customs and excise, we currently take 19 days on average to clear a container, and probably more during the Christmas uh, impending period coming up now. It takes 19 days to clear a container off the ports of Trinidad and Tobago, and it, it comes down to the fact that Customs operates its own system called the Asicula system, and the Ministry of uh, Trade and Industry operates its own system called the Single Electronic Window. 
And the single electronic window is responsible for getting all of government's approvals uh, from government agencies, and the ASCQDA system is responsible for processing data related to the application itself for importation of goods. But the two don't speak to each other. Never have. I am very fortunate, as Minister Hawaii mentioned, that I straddle two ministries, Ministry of Finance as well as Econ, as well as uh, uh, Trade and Industry. And so therefore I have the ability to call in both sets of parties and thrash it out, and we've done that. And so by, the, by implementing certain measures, as well as making certain changes to the Customs Act, certain amendments to the Customs Act, which are fairly basic and will be going to, um, to the um, Parliament before the end of this year, we will now reduce that whole bureaucratic system by allowing those two systems to speak to share data. And again, we have now a commitment from the Comptroller of Customs that other than in situations where you may have a, a security risk as far as a container is concerned, that there's no reason why a container should not be cleared off the port of Trinidad and Tobago within 24 hours. Now, there are many other indicators and there are many other areas that we need to improve significantly. But what we're doing is we're working hand in hand with the World Bank, who obviously are seeing significant um, improvement and a great deal of excitement, I have to tell you, within the ministry to make these changes happen. And more, most importantly, a political will to ensure that it does happen. Because many of these indicators span various ministries across government. One of them is how long it takes to get um, a construction permit. You would be appalled if I told you that in Trinidad and Tobago, it takes 297 days, according to the World Bank, to get a construction permit. Now, that is because there's, there are a myriad of agencies, WASA, TNTEC, Town and Country, and you've got to physically go to each of these locations, stand in line sometimes for weeks, sometimes for months, um, to be in a position to get an approval. And you've got to go back and forth on several occasions to be able to do that. 297 days. So we've been in discussions with the minister in that ministry to ensure that we don't want to be, we, we, we don't want to have worked with the World Bank to minimize many of our indicators but find that we have a stumbling block in another area that is beyond the control of the Ministry of Trade. And so therefore that's why I say we have the political will across all of these agencies to ensure, all of these ministries to ensure that that happens. And that, those are some of the basic areas um, that, we are, that we are working on currently to make sure that the world is aware that Trinidad and Tobago is genuinely open for business. But having done all of that, an organization, whether local or foreign, comes to Trinidad and Tobago, and where does he go? What does he do? Up until three months ago, we had a situation where an investor coming to Trinidad and Tobago had the opportunity of going to one of 13 different agencies responsible for investment promotion and trade facilitation in Trinidad and Tobago, spread across three different ministries. I don't need to tell you the absolute confusion that that would cause in the mind of an investor, where every single agency had a different message, where every single agency, because of the fact they could fob you off to another one, was not held accountable for, the, for their actions. And so as a direct result, you found that many things just sat around in black holes, because they were either in this agency or that agency, and no one would take advantage, no one, no one would take the initiative or the leadership on these areas. So what we've done now is we've streamlined these investment agencies and brought them into one called Invest TT. And so now the sole point of contact for a local investor or for a direct investor is Invest TT. One, you come to Trinidad and Tobago or you live in Trinidad and Tobago, you want to invest in anything, Invest TT is now that sole point of action, sole point uh, for any action to be taken. And more importantly, all of the approvals that you require as a businessman will now be 
now will now be gotten by Invest TT for you. So as a business person, foreign or local, you no longer need to go physically to all of the agencies to get your approvals. Invest TT will be the agency that will make sure that they get your approvals provided all of the information is there. And you know, we're moving towards a system, for example, uh, like they have in St. Lucia, where because they have a backlog, for example, with regard to approvals in um, town and country planning, what happens is they say, look, if we are unable to give you your approval within three months, then by default, the approval is granted. And what that does is it forces them to ensure that they either speed up the work or they farm it out to the private sector to make sure that it gets done. In Trinidad and Tobago, we don't have such a system. And it's the reason why, unfortunately, you see a lot of unplanned buildings